We are in conversation with Kevin Flynn, President and Managing Director of Fiat Chrysler Automobiles India. Kevin, thanks for uh, talking to us. Uh, a pretty exciting time uh, in the market for you because uh, you're just on the brink of launching a really uh, mass volume product, which is uh, the Jeep. But before that, uh, you know, it's, it's been a bit of a bumpy ride uh, so far. So just want you to take us through uh, the journey. You've been now in India for, I think, uh, nearly coming up to two years. Yeah, true. And uh, it's been pretty tough. Yeah, it's been a, an interesting uh, route. First thing is, though, I've got to levy a, uh, a complaint because we did promise that we were going to do this interview sitting inside an SRT driving on some fantastic mountain pass. So we're missing the Hemi V8 between uh, between us at the moment, but it's always good to, An to catch up. Uh, another opportunity for <laughs> sure. <laughs> so yeah, two years um, since I've been in India and uh, taking care of the FCA uh, business. It's been a... Uh, an interesting uh, time period and, and one of, um, I think, great exploration to, to, to really find out what is going to be the right thing for uh, our future uh, in India. And, and, you know, when we look at the resources that we have and the facilities that we have, how can we really turn that into something that is going to be really sustainable and really take us to where we want to be? You, you rightly point out it's been a little bit of a rocky road of late. It isn't uh, uh, the kind of uh, sales performance that uh, we're overtly proud of. Um, but I think what we've done is really taken the time to evaluate <coughs> what India means to us as, 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 a, as a group, um, our long-term commitment to India uh, as a group, and as a result of that and all the work that we've done, here we are now with, uh, with Jeep in India, uh, okay at the moment with uh, CBU, but as you rightly say, here we are right on the cusp now. We're already building the first uh, uh, pre-production vehicles in the Ranjengaon plant and uh, it started. So we will launch this year in third quarter a uh, India manufactured make in India Jeep. Not just for here, of course, also we're going to be exporting. So yeah, very, very exciting project and, and this is really now the new foundation of uh, where we're going to take the company for the future. So I just want to understand the strategy, Kevin. I mean, obviously, as we discussed, to be honest, the sales performance has, has not been very good at all. What's going to change it? Is it fundamentally going to be product? Because I think what you were lacking was uh, products in a more kind of volume segment. With CBUs, uh, I think uh, obviously we're only going to get limited volume. Uh, but so what's what's going to be the tipping yeah, point? Okay. So is it going to be CSU, do you think, which is going to transform the uh, entire, let's say, game plan of FCA or, or, or let's say the fortunes of FCA? Uh, undoubtedly, our decision to, uh, to bring Jeep to India is a big part of, of how we will uh, change the fortunes of the company. I mean, it's not very often that you get an opportunity to bring a 75-year-old iconic brand to a new market. Uh, and that's exactly what we've done. But we haven't just done it from a point of view of just bringing in those CPU vehicles, which we always knew were going to be on a uh, small volume uh, uh, situation. What they were to do was to sort of set the halo. They were to to bring the promise of what uh, Jeep is. You know, it demonstrates the authenticity, the sense of freedom, the capability, you know, in, in bucket loads. But that's to set the scene and, and, and for us actually to get established with those core values and, and, and core Jeep offer and then to bring this new generation, uh, brand new Jeep Compass to, right. uh, to India. Yeah. Again, focusing on Compass. Uh, yes. Do you think a few lessons learned from the, I know it's a ticklish question, the pricing strategy for the CBUs, is that going to maybe make you think that, look, uh, maybe the CBU really didn't get us to price it competitively, but pricing is important and you're going to take those learnings into Compass as well and realize that maybe the brand isn't as established yet. So. We need to kind of, let's say, I wouldn't say buy market share, but make it a little bit more appealing no, with look, good pricing. Yeah, look, uh, look, pricing is a very sensitive topic in, in, in India. And, um, you know, when we're uh, going through the planning of actually manufacturing a car here, then, then obviously uh, the, the, the pricing of that vehicle and the whole business case of that vehicle is so critical. I think we've got the price spot on. And I think we've built ourselves a project 
which is uh, going to give us a vehicle in the marketplace which is going to give us some real appeal. So we will have a surprise price, you think? You will have a price that I think will be very, very well accepted by, by the market and uh, the car comes with all the DNA and credibility of uh, what makes a Jeep Jeep. There's no, there's no shortcuts, there's no uh, uh, shortage of uh, real uh, capability and, and uh, built, into, built into the car. So I think we're going to have the right price, right product. Um, because we're also going to be exporting, you can be guaranteed of the quality and of the build and of the integrity of the vehicle because it's going to be sold on the market And the fact well. that with the exports you'll have some scale and volume which could have an impact on the price in a positive way? Yeah, it has, a, it has an impact on the business case and I think that's important. When you're in a marketplace like India where over 60% is dominating the passenger car segment is dominated by two players, it means that there's a lot of uh, competition in what remains. So <clears throat> it's important that we've got um, the right car and we've got, I call it sustainability, it's got, it, the whole project has to be sustainable over the life cycle of that uh, vehicle and I think we've got the right combination. I mean number one it's a brilliant car and, and it is a global car as well so we're one of four locations that's going to be manufacturing uh, Jeep Compass so it's incredibly capable. I've actually already driven some of the pre-production vehicles and they are on a fantastic uh, level, the refinement, the drivability, the powertrain is really, really special in the way the car drives and handles. So I'm extremely optimistic and I think it's the right decision. In invested something like $300 million uh, in the uh, Ranjin Gown plant to take it from its, its capability to the, the, new cap the new Jeep capability of, of manufacturing. And, so and it's a good move. Let's, let's talk a bit of the manufacturing because I think that's really a key element of, let's say, the viability of the Compass in India, heavy localization. Even the powertrain is going to be localized from what I understand, the two litre diesel. Mm -hmm. So uh, obviously you're going to start with a high level of local content. Yeah, we are. And that's been a, a big part of the project. For the project to really work, we uh, needed to ensure that we had really high levels of uh, localization. Which includes the engine. Yeah, in, indeed. And, and the, um, the, 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 the other, the key thing for us, uh, of course, was, was to build such a car. We needed to build quite a new, bring and quite a new number of technologies to uh, even some of the uh, uh, supplier base that we are using. So this, this car is going to be quite groundbreaking. Uh, a lot of technologies in reducing uh, body weight and, uh, and, and overall uh, package of the car. So we're going to get you know, good fuel economy, we're going to get really good handling. So there's a lot of real, um, you know, global technologies that have been pulled into this car. So I'm very so pleased with it. Looking at the segment you're going to be competing in, obviously it'll be the 15 to 20 lakh segment in that price point, I would Well, imagine. I haven't announced pricing yet. So okay. It's interesting that you've added that into the equation. But obviously where we are going to compete, we, we are very confident that we've got the right price. Right. Well, I'm, just, uh, I'm just assuming on the fact that it's a combination of good pricing, volume, and that seems to be a sweet spot because above 20, it kind of becomes a slightly more rarefied atmosphere. So it's just a logical uh, assumption, which uh, I, I don't know whether you'd agree with. But uh, the point is, uh, uh, you know, there is a lot of competition throughout all the price points. So just how are you aiming to stand apart? This is as a, one of the key things I think is what we just touched on, which is it, it is a global product. And, and I appreciate that uh, Jeep, the word Jeep defines a segment here in, in India. And that's something we've got to, we've got to take back. And it, why is that? Well, it actually harks all the way back to uh, Willie's Jeep and that's what sort of set out 4x4 four four, and then everything that has come uh, since then has sort of ended up being, being called Jeep. So there, there, is, there is, yes we're new to coming into the marketplace but actually the awareness of Jeep as a segment, Jeep as a name, is there right the way across the marketplace. So we've got to be clever in making sure that we really establish ourselves and people understand actually that's the original and therefore by, by that bringing us uh, uh, real credibility and depth. But the product itself and then our distribution uh, as well, I think is going to uh, set us apart. This is a proper SUV with all the values, all the capability of a Four Jeep. Four-wheel drive throughout the range? Not throughout the range. We'll have uh, uh, powertrain uh, options, but of course uh, four-wheel drive. Automatic. Uh, uh, it, uh, automatic transmission is going to be available. So we will have a very comprehensive uh, range uh, and, and uh, option for the customers.
Kevin, uh, you know, to be honest, uh, let's say product, obviously it's a global product, it's been proven. Frankly, I think that's the easy part. The distribution in India, the sales network, you've been struggling with that, to be honest, to really ramp up dealerships, either for Fiat or for Jeep. Is this really your biggest challenge? Because you launched also, uh, you know, the Jeep brand with just a handful of dealers. Uh, something which, uh, you know, one would have expected a more wider spread at, in terms of a network goes. So I just want to focus on the network because yeah, that's fine. I think that is really one of the biggest challenges. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, I think, all right, I think it's, you can look at it two ways. It's, it's one of the biggest challenges, one of the biggest opportunities. Uh, we've got, uh, under FCA umbrella, um, some really strong uh, loyal dealers that have been with us, you know, through thick and thin. And uh, I think what uh, Compass does and our plans for Jeep moving forward uh, gives us a real opportunity to put a business case on the table for them that's really, really going to work. And let's be honest, you know, you've got to have, for any business to be successful, you need successful uh, retailer partners. We need to be successful as, a corp as, a, as part of the corporation, our manufacturing successful, our engineering successful. You know, you've got to see success on, on a multi-level. Multi and I think the, the business case that we can put together for uh, quite a select number of our dealers is, is, is going to be good. So we started off with this strategy of having what we call destination stores in the main cities. And they're there. And that was all part of parcel of putting environments in place that really... Uh, established Jeep or, or put the beacon out there of what, what Jeep should be and they are beautiful. I don't know how many you've managed to visit. They are stunning. They are world-class uh, fit and finish dealerships uh, beautifully put together and that was obviously to start off with our CBU uh, uh, sales uh, initially but the whole thing is, is, is underpinned by uh, what we're going to be doing with Compass and then what comes uh, beyond Compass. Compass is the, is the real focus now. So what we're actually doing over the next few months is there's around uh, 40 of our uh, current uh, op uh, field operations which are actually going through a program with us and converting to FCA and we're going to be launching also the uh, uh, Mopar after sales uh, care uh, program as well so that's going to take care of, uh, of, of the service, the technical backup and the parts operations. Um, and, and, and we will, in those environments, we will have uh, Fiat, uh, Jeep and a bath in one environment and then we also have these, as I say, destination stores. So we will build on that and what we've done is looked at the whole country and worked out where does that footprint need to be? Where is it we're going to sell Compass? And that's where we're going to make sure that we've got the right level of uh, uh, facility with the right level of backup, both technical parts service the whole operation and sales. So it's, I mean, we've just doubled the size of our um, uh, warehouse, parts warehouse uh, in uh, Chapin. Uh, so that's now all uh, ready to go. So, you know, we, we will have fantastic availability, very efficient supply. Um, so I think we've, we've, um, we've looked at our business and said, where are we strong and where do we need to strengthen? And I think right. we've addressed the areas that we needed to strengthen. And I think we're going to be ready for a, a new beginning and I think that should be a, uh, it, it, it's exciting and I, I think it's good, it's good for India and it's good for us. Yeah. You, you talked about a new beginning but uh, Kevin the sense I get is the new beginning is all about Jeep and to be honest Fiat seems to be a bit of a forgotten child. So I just need to understand where does Fiat fit in? The sense I get is you're going to be concentrating for the next couple of years in terms of product. Uh, with Jeep because obviously there's nothing new on the table from Fiat one can see coming all new uh, and then maybe Fiat and perhaps maybe even Alfa Romeo after five six years who knows but I'm just saying is that a logical strategy uh, to assume? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of our focus at the moment and, and so look, has, is, is, is Fiat on the is a, a, no, on a bit of on the back. slow it's, burn? It's honestly, it's not on the slow burn. There, there's a number of projects that are going on on uh, uh, with Fiat. What is very very important is that uh, uh, replacing the current models um, is. It, it, we talked about with the Jeep. It's got to be sustainable. It's got to be something that is that, that that is not just a you know two years and then suddenly you're you're right. in a in a different situation. So whatever we do now is going to be for the long term. Whatever we do is going to be a sustainable project in its own right. And Fiat is being considered under that same... Uh, so uh, same, we same can rate. expect a completely new product lineup yeah, on we're, Fiat we're, and we're, to we're working on a number of fronts to find the correct and appropriate solution 
to the next generation of, of, of product for, uh, for Fiat. The, the work that has been done in Ranjan Gaon plant has, uh, uh, gives us opportunities and we are pursuing those but, opportunities. But you so. are linked to other markets like Brazil because India doesn't have the volume or scale to sure. allow you to do products just for India. So sure. clearly you are linked to what these other markets do and typically Brazil, isn't it? Yeah, and, and, and have been in the past as well. So, exactly. you know, there's a number of uh, projects that can be looked as sort of almost working on a number of region basis, you know, what fits and, and, and what do you need. So there's, um, it's difficult for me to give you sort of too much insight, but, but, but there are a number of uh, projects which we are fervently uh, pursuing currently and, 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 and I'm sure there'll, there'll come the time where we can tell you exactly what we're going to do. And what about Alfa Romeo? Oh, look, I think, I mean, it's amazing what the company is doing for Alfa Romeo and the way that that brand is, uh, all, again, all that fantastic history being pulled through. Whether it's, you know, there may be a right time at some point for uh, India, we'll evaluate that uh, as, as, we, as we go down the road. The key thing for us now is to really make sure that this next project, this uh, introduction of Compass, is just done really, really well. Uh, it really meets with the with the pricing expectation. It meets with the uh, customer expectation of what they are looking for in an SUV, and really sets the benchmark. And I think we can build from there. So, Kevin, clearly uh, you've said it. Jeep main focus, and within that compass, it's really the the next big thing, the big white hope for uh, for for Fiat FCA. Yes. So you're going to be throwing everything at it. One can see. So uh, just to give us a run up, I mean, what can consumers? Uh, really expect in terms of availability, options? I mean, are you going to be just going uh, the, the full Monty with the Compass? Yeah, look, I think it can evolve even more than the initial plan, but we've got a, a range of uh, uh, models within the Compass uh, uh, range of cars. So a wide, a wide yeah, range? Yeah, it's going to be a choice and people will be able to uh, pick the one that's going to be right for them and do the job that they want. Do you think even them. a petrol has a place in Compass? Oh, no question. Okay, we really? will have petrol, we will have diesel and we will have automatic. So we'll make sure that we're ticking all the boxes. And also, while we're talking about petrol, we're also just about to announce the uh, arrival of uh, our Wrangler 3.6-litre uh, uh, petrol. And I can tell you now that we're going to be having a uh, price for that vehicle at 56 lakhs. So, uh, Fantastic. A, 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 so I'm sure that's going to be met with enthusiasm by, the, um, uh, by uh, our, our Jeep enthusiasts. So that's uh, a lot of commitment uh, as far as Jeep goes and uh, uh, you know I think uh, one can see the enthusiasm and uh, I know it's been a tough ride so far but uh, that as, uh, as you said clearly there seems to be now a really new beginning and I really wish you all the best. Oh thanks so much, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you.